So we have a, an hour today to um, give everyone on, on this call um, both what we're going to do is give you a little bit of feedback about, uh, excuse me, context, excuse me, about um, who we are as um, a coalition, New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition, the campaign we're running. Sorry, I got some um, background refrigerator noises. Um, then what we're trying to achieve with this grant uh, and opportunity and then walk you guys through the application process. And we'll have two separate points um, with which you can um, ask questions and we'll do our best to answer those questions um, about both the grant and just the process and the whole spiel there. So um, I'll just start by introducing myself. I'm uh, Rob Hennig Bell. I'm the campaign manager for Bike Easy and uh, play that same sort of role for uh, the New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition. And with that, I'm going to hand off to uh, my partner here, Catherine Wheeler. Hi, I'm Catherine. Um, I am the Program and Outreach Coordinator for SOUL. Uh, SOUL stands for Sustaining Our Urban Landscape. And we are a local tree planting organization that is part of the Complete Streets Coalition because we believe that a street isn't complete unless um, it's really comfortable to walk and bike down and um, that means shaded walkways and clean air and all of the eco and human benefits that trees provide. So we're really excited to be a part of the coalition. Um, the coalition itself is a group of organizations, businesses, um, and just everyday people who support improving our roadways and creating safer and more equitable transportation options um, with the goal of enhancing the health, equity, sustainability, quality of life of the people of the city. Um, and that means whether they're walking, driving, biking, or um, taking transit or other means of um, transportation. Lots of people have been like roller skating and rollerblading uh, recently with the pandemic, um, but you know, creating safe streets for everyone um, and taking away some of the dangerous and confusing things that make streets be unsafe. Um, so that means like protected bike lanes and traffic calming mechanisms and um, other things like that. And hopefully now art. <laughs> Great. Um, thanks, Catherine. So I will take uh, just a few minutes. I wish we could do a full round of introductions, but I think that would eat up a lot of our time here. I'm definitely excited to have uh, so many folks joining us today. Um, shout out to my man, Justin, right there. What's up, man? Um, uh, so I'm going to take just a few minutes to give you guys some the context um, background. Um, and then Catherine's going to go more into uh, the goals of uh, the Art for the Bikeways grant. So I'm going to share my screen, show you guys some uh, just slides to provide that background. Are folks seeing that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so um, this is our campaign as the New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition. You know, I like I said, I work for Bike Easy. Catherine works for Soul. This is about improving transportation in all of its forms for all of the people and the visitors of uh, folks who come to New Orleans for biking, walking, transit and then all the other ways we use our streets to make, um, to make the most out of uh, our, that public space. Uh, it's just a screenshot of a lot of the ads that you might have seen around town or on your digital devices. And this is uh, still from um, our website. Um, the campaign is focused on that tagline of more safety and less stress centered around the bike, um, bike infrastructure and the bikeway network that is being built currently in New Orleans. Um, and this just kind of gives you a sense of who is on the coalition right now. We have 30 organizations. So advocates, um, advocacy community, transportation, housing, um, environmental sustainability, um, our culture bearers here in New Orleans, uh, MACNO, um, the organization is on the coalition as well. Got some churches, definitely have a focus of um, economic empowerment, uh, both for 
distinct groups of folks, but also for neighborhoods, certain neighborhoods who want to see more local businesses, biking and transit can be used to foster that economic development and then neighborhood associations as well. And if you're a member of any group like that and want to join the coalition, um, be in touch and we'll certainly make that happen. Uh, and this is uh, some of the organizations um, that are on the coalition. Um, these top four here are sort of chair chairing organizations who set a lot of the strategic goals, but then all of the other organizations are actively a part of that as well. And these are some of those organizations, really a great group of organizations that we're excited about. So, um, and then this is some of what I talk about when you know, myself and other, other members of our campaign team go around talking to various groups and talk to our local elected officials as well. Part of the problem here is that New Orleans year after year is an unsafe place for people walking and biking up and down the streets on the sidewalks. People just walking across the street are killed by motor vehicles far too frequently. Um, it's actually a worse problem for people walking than it is for people biking, although it's still a significant problem for people biking as well. Um, and this uh, census map here shows part of the problem, which is that the majority of um, dangerous, fatal, or serious crashes occur precisely where people of low income and people of color reside in greater New Orleans. And you can see here 67% of the crashes occur in these census tracts um, uh, where those groups of folks live. So it's an inequitable situation um, and something that we're highly focused on. And so we're supporting Mayor Cantrell's vision, which is called New Moving New Orleans. This is her overall transportation vision based around these four principles. You can find this whole plan at nola.gov slash transportation or just slash moving New Orleans. The leading proponent of that vision is Moving New Orleans Bikes. Um, that was the first thing they came out with out of the gate and we're very happy about that. And the Moving New Orleans Bikes effort started last year um, with a bunch of you know, public meetings, describing the vision and getting input and feedback from folks. Um, and then they ended up with a citywide vision map. So. You can also look this up at that same uh, nola.gov slash transportation address, but this is the full vision of all of Orleans Parish with every neighborhood receiving protected bike lanes, bike and walk boulevards that all connect to one another and connect to key destinations and jobs, grocery stores, uh, the lakefront, the levee trails, parks on down the line. So that's the full vision. The over 600 miles of that. And then the first 75 miles is being built this year and next year. So a big step towards that full vision. And this is what it consists of. Bike and walk boulevards. I'm starting to call it bike and walk because especially during COVID that is becoming more and more of an emphasis. We need just more space for people generally on next to the roadway. Um, protected bike lanes, transit, you know, bus islands, better crosswalks. That's what makes up the Moving New Orleans Bikes Network. Um, this is just an image that we show people what it looks like before and then what it can look like after when we have um, these improvements implemented um, on, a, on a street, on a block. So we could dive into that further, but I'm gonna keep it moving. This is just some, a lot of work we're doing on our campaign. And this is a mini grant. Y'all are here for the big grants and not the mini grants. I'm gonna stop there on sharing that screen. Um, and then I think what I was going to share next, um, yeah, it's just the actual um, art for the bikeways piece. And then I'm just gonna show you what we're talking about a bit on this and then Catherine's going to pick it up about the specific goals of the grant and then we'll take some questions from you all. So let me just share just a little bit more. I will be fast. So 
This is um, a slide deck that I shared when we were first briefing the city of New Orleans about what we were going to do in support of their efforts to build out these bikeways, um, that we wanted to do this public art piece to value art and culture um, as make that a part of this project. Um, so we'll answer more questions about working with the city later, but obviously we have to get approval for putting anything in the roadway, including art. So that is certainly a big piece of this. Um, again, this is a $20,000 grant. Um, we're not officially partnered with Arts Council, but Arts Council is helping uh, us reach out to folks such as yourselves, artists, creative folks here in the, in the region um, to get this done. Um, these are the types of installations that we whittled this down a bit, um, thinking about the types of art installations that we could consider that we could get approved um, by the city of New Orleans or by whomever the responsible authority is. Um, so that is traditional murals on walls that are adjacent to um, any corridor on the Moving New Orleans Bikes Network. Murals within the bike lanes, so some sort of art, you know, um, whatever you are inspired to do within those bike lanes themselves. Um, and then it was actually a last minute um, addition to say that, that the city says that we can do art on the street, on the pavement itself. Um, just there are limitations around the, on the, um, within the intersection and then we can't block crosswalk the white bars that make up a crosswalk cannot be um, affected and then modified traffic diverters such as planters or other approved items that can go in a roadway space that um, could receive an art artistic or stylized treatment so again sorry I probably should have been clicking through this but traditional murals um, we will, you will, as the artist, um, have to get approval for a, a privately owned wall. Um, we don't have that set up as of right now. We have a lot of allies and friends in the city, so we can be helpful, but obviously that would be, you know, of um, a necessity for the uh, traditional mural. Street murals, so the big one in DC, Black Lives Matter. Um, that technically could um, happen under this grant. Something of this um, scale even, that'd be up to you to figure out the budget on that and how that would work. You can see in there where the E is on the lives, that looks like it's going over a crosswalk. That might be a problem for us. So I'm just pointing that out. Um, that's our one really hard line on street murals is that we can't um, obfuscate whatever the word would be, get in the way of a crosswalk. Here are um, examples of art within the bike lanes. And so, you know, obviously an exciting prospect and something um, that I think I would, the only thing I would say about this is that this is a way, I know the selection committee and the coalition is interested in figuring out a way to tie the network together, right? This is a big network of bike lanes and walkways. How do we give it a sense of um, being a unified whole? So I think this has the potential to stretch a lot of distance, which would be a plus in its favor. But certainly all of these are very good and options that everyone's excited about. Um, on the sidewalks next to bike lanes, um, this one here with the sort of octopus squid is not precisely something that could happen because it's, you see, it's obscuring the white of the crosswalks. That would not be allowed. But the sidewalk part, the curb part of that certainly could. And even around the crosswalks is also something that could happen. This other sidewalk storm drain situation is perfectly within the scope of this project. Oh, excuse me, this, I shouldn't show the modified bike parking. I'll just make a quick note. Um, we did consider such a, a use of modified bike parking, but figured that 
the scale of the budget, $20,000, um, highly would limit the amount of locations for sculpture or other um, such installations. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a appropriate scale um, for this, uh, the impact of, of the grant. So we nix that, although if someone has a great affordable way to do that, you know, be, you can be in touch and we can potentially consider it, but. Um, so, and here are some planters from Berkeley, California. Um, the city, I think is at least open to using planters they they're the new French Quarter pedestrian plans, pedestrianization plans, although not fully passed and in effect, um, call for gateway treatments to restrict a road space. And so they have planters or other items that can be placed to calm traffic. So you might have to be a little inventive with this one, but this is something that the city of New Orleans is very much considering use, um, the use of planters and other devices to calm traffic particularly on bike boulevards that make up the network. And that's what's shown in the, that bottom image there. All right, um, I think I should, so these are some of the locations. Uh, this is a, a map of uh, the corridors of the network that are gonna be built this year and going into next year. Um, but I think before we go further into sites, uh, I think we maybe we should, I should hand it off to Catherine to talk about some of the other goals of the grant at this point. Sure, so um, we spend a lot of time within the selection committee talking about really what we hope this project will achieve. And um, I think Rob touched on a lot of it in describing the types of art and um, some of the limitations of what the grant means with $20,000 and the 75 miles of bike, ne bike network that's being built. Um, that's a lot of roadway and a lot of area. And so to try to tie in um, tie in all those areas and make it be an inclusive thing, you know, looking at looking at that and considering that when thinking about the kind of art that you're making is important because we don't want we want to be able to really um, activate is kind of the word that we fell upon um, as a as an adjective that would like, explain what we hope that this will do. We really hope that the art will help people um, use the space and see it as a space that is fun and, and accessible and speaks to community and helps build a sense of community and a sense of place. Um, we're also really hoping that this project can tie in both the East and the West Bank, that we don't forget about our friends over in Algiers, because a lot of the, a lot of the preliminary work that's happened with um, these new bike and walking networks um, first started in Algiers along Newton Street was the first one that has been done. Um, so we're hoping that people will remember that and think of that when they're looking at the maps and thinking about where these murals or um, you know, street art can be Put in place that we remember that um, we want the art to really speak to the people of the city and um, I say that also because like the map that Rob showed about where all of the accidents happen looking at those communities and having the art speak to the people that live in those communities and are going to be using um, using these networks you know we're hoping that what this does is promote greater utilization of this and create greater equity and create safer ways for people to get to their jobs more efficiently, um, create ways for people to be able to share the beauty of the outdoors of New Orleans and especially during like the pandemic, you know, that it's a, a place that people feel welcomed in um, and able to connect with others. So the art itself should should speak to those kind of things. It should create, should be lasting. Part of um, what y'all will need to consider is like a maintenance plan as well. You know, like how is this going to last through the years? Because we don't want it to be something that's temporary and have this just kind of fall to the wayside. Um, yeah, but like a sense of community, a sense of pride. I think that's something that we're really, really focusing on with this. 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, think, I think that's great. I think that touches on, you know, the goals that are, were laid out. If y'all have already looked over the application um, request for proposals, um, those goals are laid out. I, it's just important to keep in mind, yeah, what are we actually trying to achieve here? Um, so I could go into the map and all the sites um, or the potential, but I think maybe now is a good time to open up to any initial questions. Um, I am taking notes as well. Um, but um, so let's, uh, folks can enter into the chat if they prefer, that's fine as well. Um, but also we could just open it up. Are there any walls uh, that are already approved? Is there, like, I, I know I came in a little bit late. I don't know if you guys touched on that at all, but are there any walls in, on any of the, the corridors that are approved from the business owners uh, or would part of that $20,000 budget have to be to make a wall? I saw wall murals is one of the options. Yeah, it's uh, a good question. Uh, I think you emailed me on this question. I'm sorry for not responding just yet. Um, I did touch on this. We have, we do not have pre-approval for walls adjacent to um, the network. So that would have to be worked out with yourself. We could potentially be helpful, but we're not going to lead that effort. Brad, can I add something on that one? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm Lilith. I work with Algiers Economic Development Foundation. Um, we're part of the coalition. And um, one example I want to give on the wall front is we've been out with the Arts Council on the MacArthur and Holiday Corridor um, at that intersection, which is also on the network. And that's right where the Algiers Regional Library is. And there's a lot of surfaces there that we've kind of looked at as the potential for places to put murals for various projects. Um, so something to think about in the conversation that Rob started is that private business owners sit in a somewhat different category than um, city owned spaces. And so thinking about are there um, city owned buildings that are along the corridor that you could also reach out to that might be easier for that approval. Um, but the Arts Council is very well versed in these kinds of relationships. So um, as Rob said, the coalition won't lead the charge on that, but there's a great body of experience that we can refer to and connect artists with to kind of figure out what would make sense. Yeah, that's a great point Lilith brings up. You know, the Arts Council, at, even though they're not technically sponsoring this project, they're very excited about it. And we could, you know, just try to get some counsel to Lilith's point from some of them on how to conduct those negotiations as, as an artist. But a lot of it, just to be very clear, a lot of that will fall on the artist to you know, be the, in the lead of that uh, effort. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm sorry, I came in late too. Um, so you might have already said this, Rob, but uh, is this just one chunk given to one artist or to different artists? And another question following that is, if somebody proposes a uh, piece, are they expected to put it in different places in the city to activate different areas? Or is it just like one grant for one spot of one artist? Um, it's meant to be a multi-site installation. Sorry if we didn't make that clear. Um, that's kind of what I was getting at in saying that we want to be including you know, different places along the 75 mile network. Uh, it would be one grant for one art or artist group. Um, we're also definitely taking applications like from say an art teacher that wants to, you know, use their art class to do something. That kind of proposal would absolutely be accepted, but it will be one chunk of money going to an art or artist group for multi, a multi um, space installation. Yep. Catherine, I don't know if you have the chat open. Christo has a question um, around uh, planters and soul. Oh, okay. So Christo says, concerning planters, is the budget for just planters or for planting as well? Can soul or other partners have access to plants for these planters? Um, I would assume the budget would be for the planters and for plants in the planting, and that would be part of like what your maintenance budget would be about. Uh, Soul just plants trees and we wouldn't plant trees in planters. It's possible that we might be able to help with like getting some plants at wholesale um, or something like that. I can't 
necessarily guarantee that that would be something we could do, but we do have strong relationships with a lot of local growers and stuff. So that could be something that we could possibly help you with. Um, but am I right in that, that the budget would be for planters and the plants that go in them and part of the maintenance, Rob? Yeah, we don't, the, the city doesn't have um, planters to provide. So yeah, th this $20,000 really is, you know, covers it all. There's very little, if it, uh, there's just some guidance from the city, some guidance from the coalition that can be provided, perhaps access to here or there, you know, a space, but yeah, the budget has to cover the full cost. Any other questions at this time? Um, we will, I think the next thing I'll, I'll go through the, the sites on the network and then we'll walk through the actual application process. Yes, Elizabeth, uh, we are recording and we'll both put this on nolacompletestreets.org, um, our YouTube channel, but then we can uh, email this recording to everyone um, who's uh, on it right now. Um, okay, well, I will share our Google Map just in case folks haven't seen um, the expanse of, uh, of the network, of just what's being built this year, which is um, the city refers to as uh, their, <laughs> wow. Um, for the first time ever, it's Google Maps is not letting me open this map. That's really interesting. Maybe people were creating new layers in it, um, unknownst, unbeknownst to me. Um, okay, I got it. Sorry, folks. Okay. So I open this up in a different screen here. I'm, I'm just gonna sort of give you a basic sense of what's going on right here. So we identified a bunch of different points along the network. I'll start in Algiers because it's a little simpler to look at. Um, so there's roughly 10 corridors covering about 10 miles um, of improvements for moving New Orleans bikes just in Algiers on the West Bank. So uh, Lilith uh, pointed out this intersection here. Um, this corner is a very wide, big corner that's very um, sort of acts as a hub, both in just Algiers generally, but certainly for the network. This connects lower and upper Algiers a lot of the residential areas and also is where the public library is right there, big shopping center, um, Algiers Plaza. And the owners of Algiers Plaza have expressed interest in doing some sort of installation artwork there. There's no big wall right right there. I guess there is at the library about a block down as, as Lilith said, but that would be an extremely high visibility area, lots of room in the roadway. So we designated that as a potential spot. Also Algiers Ferry, even though it's not technically on the network, it does connect in the sense that this Newton Street connects to the levee trail. So in a sense it is the network, but you can see none of the improvements are directly to um, Algiers Ferry. But obviously Algiers Ferry uh, terminal is a key transportation, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Node, whatever. <laughs> um, for all sorts of travelers, especially people biking. So if you're able to do something there, that would be tremendous and really help connect both sides of the river, um, which is something that is a high priority for the network in general and for this project. And one thing I'll make, point I'll make about the East Bank is that you can see there's fewer points here in the downtown area. Um, so I think if you wanted to do something downtown, you'd really want to think hard about whether that's going to lift up and serve the purpose of connecting the city as a whole. You know, downtown has a lot of, you know, eyes on it, a lot of installations already down in that area. Um, 
So we have a little bit of a bias towards doing work out in the neighborhoods um, to activate these bikeways as Catherine talked about previously. We want this to be a new exciting thing for people who maybe haven't been super connected to biking or haven't considered alternative methods of transportation previously. So we want to reach people where they're, where they're living. Um, and we want to give them that sense of connection and culture and activation, active lifestyle, all that sort of stuff that is connected to biking. So a lot of the points that we highlighted, you know, looking at this sort of central city to Broadmoor connection, um, both Martin Luther King Boulevard, this is actually not fully accurate because there, there are going to be improvements in this upper stretch north of Claiborne or on the lakeside of Claiborne. Um, Martin Luther King Boulevard is going to be remade with a really robust protected uh, bike uh, bikeways on both sides of the street. That's going to connect to Broad, which is going to connect to the Broad Street Bridge, which is already built, so it's not included here. And then there's going to be, I think later in the year, next year, going to be protected bike lanes on Washington down to Toledano connecting Xavier University. So we picked, there are a lot of sort of open areas, um, a lot of broad road, you know, wide roadways, little spots, little triangles right off these roads that could be great spots for art installations of various kinds. Um, so lots of potential there. Um, and certainly the same applies to um, downriver neighborhoods as well. Um, Elysian Fields. Elysian Fields is an inter interesting street. The, the road um, work is already beginning for moving New Orleans bikes on this by the river section. Um, the rest of it is eventually going to be made into part of the network. So I, I think we did try to include near the fire station here on Elysian Fields, which connects with Miro and Galvez, which are going to be receiving protected bike lanes next uh, early part of next year or sooner, potentially even. Um, so if there are specific questions about the map, about the network, now's a great time to ask. But the, the last thing I'll say before opening up is just that any spot on these designated corridors are potentially open to um, a proposal of yours. So any uh, network-based questions? All right, hearing none. Um, Catherine, why don't we walk folks through the application process? Sure. Um, so it's pretty simple. We are accepting applications for- You, about you want me to pull it up on the screen or would that be helpful? Oh yeah, that would be nice. Okay, I'll do that. You can, you can go ahead, I'll, I'll get it going. Okay, so we're accepting applications for um, about the next month. Um, and it's a pretty simple process to apply. We're looking for an artist statement that would just be like a general introduction about you and your work, the concepts and ideas that you hope to explore. Um, if you're a group, you know, um, describing who each person in the group is and how they would be contributing. Um, we're also looking for, and that's just a short, like 500 word statement. Um, we're also looking for a resume that tells us about your professional experience, um, your accomplishments. And similarly, if you're applying as a team, um, it would highlight either like your work that you've done previously as a team or um, information about each person within the team. Um, and that's about a two page maximum. If there's, if it's a team, it can be a bit longer. Um, we also are hoping to see some samples of your previous work. Um, we're look, just looking for some high-res digital images um, with descriptions and titles so that we can see the types of things that you've done before. Um, and then um, a description of those works, locations, um, where they've been exhibited in galleries or other public spaces. Um, and information about like the medium and size of those um, 
of those artworks. And then the really important part would be your proposal, your conceptual proposal. We um, are looking for about two pages um, maximum, and this is your opportunity to really explain your concept and vision. Um, we also are hoping that you would discuss um, your process, um, looking like the materials that you hope to use, some of the things that you know you might be working on, like if you are needing to talk to people about using wall spaces, how you're going to do that kind of outreach. Um, we don't necessarily need an exact mock-up of your plan at this point, but definitely something that helps paint the picture of, um, of your idea and what you're hoping to present. Um, it would be helpful if you did know the locations that you hope to put these in, if you've like gone out into the streets and seen things, you know, anything that really helps helps us understand your vision, um, that would be that would be where you would want to fit that in. Um, we're also looking for a budget. Uh, and of course, you know, it'll be an estimation and things might change as you start getting into the work, but $20,000 is the max that we have to offer for this project. And so um, in the budget, you also should be thinking about, like we said, about maintenance. Like if, it, if you're looking at planters, what it might mean to replace some of the plants in a year. Um, you know, if you're looking at planters, how would you water those things? If we're thinking about street art, what happens if it's a um, really high traffic area and you know the type of paint rubs off like what what's your plan for keeping this keeping this going and keeping it lasting because um like i said before we don't want this to be something that just falls away we really want it to be something that encourages encourages the use of the space over time as well um and so yeah budget that also brings into the installation maintenance etc and um removal um what what you think that that kind of cost would be if um, if that's necessary? So, can I can I jump in real on this mm -hmm. one? Um, so, folks understand, uh, you know, whenever you're talking about anything in the roadway, or really anything in life, but certainly in the roadway, which is like, you know, travel, heavy travel, you know, it gets wear right. Nothing is truly permanent in the roadway um you know it's just a matter of whether it's 18 months or five years or 10 years you know what what is the realistic um life of this installation and just about a week ago um i was able to meet with um one of the folks at the city who's putting together a new policy for the city of New Orleans on any sort of installations in the roadway, specifically art though. Um, and so we are able, we've been able to have a conversation and make sure that we're aligning with this process within at city hall. And what, so they've come up with a, a matrix that's not yet finalized, but um, is built around um, ideas to say, if an artist or an art group was going to do a project where they're going to paint storm drains, that can be approved by the city of New Orleans for two, a two year period because they know the type of paints that would be used on that could roughly last that long. Um, and so they could approve it for that amount of time. And so they wanted from us to say, if someone was going to do art within the bike lane, what's the realistic thing? Because, you know, a neighborhood group might want to do chalk, whatever, um, which lasts a lot less time than the proper paints and, you know, on down the line. So where we think this is at right now um, for within, you know, painting such and such within on the street, either on the, you know, vehicular travel lane or bike lane, they are saying that it can be approved for six months at a time, but that can be extended as long as, 
you know, you as the artist, us as an organization, say it's still in good working order at that six month window, we can say, you know, we're fine, extend it until someone really complains until like a neighbor or a business starts to have a problem. That's when um, things would run into an issue there. So I say all that to say that this is a little bit of a moving fluid situation with the city, but they are fully aware that this is, we're trying to achieve something as close to quote unquote permanent. We want something durable that's going to last for, you know, we don't want something that's going to go away in a month. We don't want something that's going to go away in even six months, most likely. I'm speaking for myself right now. We want something that's going to be around for the people of New Orleans to really get to know and feel and appreciate the work that you're doing and the bikeway network. So certain installations can last for years, but then, you, so you should be evaluating what you're proposing to do, the type of paint you're going to use, the type of other installations you're going to use. It can realistically last such and such amount of time. At the end of that time, this is what's going to happen or what should happen. And as long as you can speak to that clearly, realistically, then you're meeting the need here. And I do think from my, the conversation with the city that we can reasonably extend their time period limitations as long as there's a solid plan in place uh, or an approach that um, is realistic around it. So I hope that's clear enough on that point. Um, is there more that we wanna say about the application process here? Um, yeah, eligibility, um, we're asking that people be 18 years or older. Um, like I said, it can be an artist or an artist team, someone led by an experienced artist, um, anyone, any kind of community group or group of people that don't have a lot of um, professional experience. We ask that you are working with someone who does meet these eligibility requirements and that includes, like I said, 18 years or older. Having two years of demonstrating experience, we really would like to see some of your previous work um, and then that you can meet all of the contractual obligations adhere to the timeline, um, which I guess maybe you should lead us into the yeah, timeline. Let's, yeah, let's, let's go over the timeline. Just so everyone's crystal clear on this, um, we hope that we've allowed enough time for things to percolate for you all and to do the proper research and coordination. So applications are open through the evening. It's like a Sunday, November 8th. So you have through that weekend, so you can enjoy Halloween and the election and then finish up uh, your applications. Um, throughout the month of November, we have a um, seven person selection committee that's going to evaluate um, your applications and meet probably a, a couple times over that period of time over November, um, then we will announce um, finalists. And I believe the plan is to have three finalists. Um, and we will notify, make that announcement by no December 4th, that week, certainly, certainly by that date, and most likely on that date. And um, in that following week, we're asking the finalists, you know, if we can members of the selection committee can meet them at one or more of their pr proposed uh, site installations and just talk through what their that vision is and just make sure it's, um, you know, that they're excited about it, that it's a good plan and for everyone to see the space and have a sense of it. And then we'll announce the winner, um, the winning applicant on December 17th. So hopefully a nice Christmas, um, you know, holiday present to uh, folks. Um, and then we had May 1st, but we moved the installation deadline back to June 1st, just with the acknowledgement that uh, the city of New Orleans is building out these bikeways currently. They're not 100% on the schedule that they were trying to stick to, but we think the bulk of um, the network, the corridors that I laid out on the map 
will be completed by that time. So we're definitely hoping that come, you know, April and May, um, this artwork can be hitting the ground and be linked to people actually being able to ride and enjoy um, the network. So yeah, so let's open back up to questions or thoughts or anything that y'all might have at this time. Well, I'll, I'll answer uh, Elizabeth's question here in the chat. Um, so yes, we are trying to make sure that this, uh, these installations, whatever shape they take, um, can be uh, experienced on both sides of the river. The, this project um, started out in Algiers and we have seen it and the city has seen it as a, a big deal for the communities um, in Algiers who often aren't connected, don't have the transportation and transit um, that other folks do in the city. So we wanna make sure at least part of this reaches Algiers and yep, yeah, and then also the East Bank. So you gotta make it stretch in some way. Any other questions? Y'all must have some. Justin, do you have a question? I think you must, or you have a, you have a thought. No, oh, I'm so excited. This is a dream come true. I want to make so much art all over this city. Thanks for doing this. This is a great presentation. I'm just so stoked. I got an incredible pitch. We're just going to light it up. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Um, all right. We well, all have a tough task matching this man's enthusiasm. I'll say that. That's always the case. God bless him. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Um, yeah, well, uh, you know, they're, they're, the question that, um, you know, if we're focused on that, um, I guess it's not a question, just to say that this is a process for the city as well. Um, you know, at Bike Easy, we did a, a big project in 2018 called Connect the Crescent, um, which demonstrated protected bikeways in downtown and directly adjacent to downtown. And it was great, it was pretty successful overall. Um, but we were supposed to have a public art piece to that as well. And the city was trying to say yes. And then they ended up, things fell apart for like legal reasons and other sort of bureaucratic problems. So, but I think out of that disappointment, a lot of the folks at the city understand that they sort of messed that up and they want to get a public art policy right for not just us right now, but for neighborhood groups, other folks around the city to be able to, you know, make their neighborhoods better and safer, but also they reflect the culture in, in better ways. So I think they are committed to not messing up your vision for this process. So um, I know that the application process, you know, there's several pieces to it. Um, but I think if you guys just go through that application process and, you know, just, um, you know, just try to be as clear as possible about what you want to achieve, then um, we're going to end up in a really good place. Because I think the city knows, I think if we could just get, you know, some of you are muralists out there, just find, you know, a couple of different spots. And I think there's enough time to get some agreement from folks who own some walls. So, um, I think we're well situated to make this really a big success. So any other questions? Was that Ayo? Yeah, that's me. I was, I, I was thinking about a question. I mean, I feel like you've kind of already addressed it and it was really, you guys said the onus would be on us to make these relationships with different organizations. I was kind of wondering like if you guys plan on identifying any buildings that more or less the time it would take for me to not only select places, but to go through whatever bureaucracy is necessary to, to secure the relationship with them, I kind of feel is a bit outside the scope of most artists. Um, and you guys having an institutional or organizational presence, I just feel like if you guys were connecting with some of these businesses, it might make the, 
I don't know, like lighten the load a little bit on the people who are doing the creative part. And that's, that's kind of selfish on my part. I realize you guys are doing a lot. Um, but overall, I was kind of hopeful once I saw walls, wall murals that I could do something that would not eat my entire budget on materials, like, like building a lot of things of any kind of scale. I don't know how to, I don't know how to stretch $20,000 across more than one location if it weren't to paint on flat surfaces that are already there. And that's just my limited creativity. But if there's no walls that are actually available without me finding and like making relationships with those people, then I kind of, I kind of feel like I'm just drawing a blank. Like I don't, I don't want to have to go build a wall somewhere, get it approved <laughs> and then spend my budget on that. Like that's kind of unreasonable. But if there's no walls that are already accepted locations, then I, um, I get your point here. Yeah, no, I, I, it, and it's a fair point. I mean, I, everyone's time and resources are limited and, I certainly understand that. Um, and I think we all understand that. Uh, I will say this, and, I'll, and we can make a, I think an emendation to, you know, how we communicate this both on our website and on our messaging. I think what we can do is to say that if you give us maybe some perspective walls um, and some locations, you know, as, as a separate part of this campaign, um, we are doing a lot of outreach to businesses already that are on the network to see if they are supportive of bike infrastructure and trying to recruit them as supporters of the campaign and the coalition's work. So we can give a little extra outreach. Um, we have, you know, campaign team, a couple folks um, who can try to foster some conversations and be helpful as much as we can. We can't guarantee that we're going to be able to you know get them to say yes but i can say if you see some good locations with some good walls let us know what those are in a timely fashion and we will do our best to foster some conversations and do do so in alignment with um some of our friends at the arts council um because maybe we can smooth that out a bit um, Lilith, were you going to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say in terms of walls, um, especially I think for the proposal portion, um, don't be limited by the fact that you don't have a wall secured yet. I think that's really the, the proposal concept of like, what's the concept behind it? The review committee will look at it and say, okay, what's the feasibility? What are some wall, you know, does this seem feasible in this area? because walls like this exist versus are you proposing something in an area where there aren't even walls, right? Um, we don't expect people to build their own walls. Um, I think the thing is that the Arts Council does have good experience working with business owners, securing that. There are some like legal aspects of securing a wall, um, how long that public art has to be on that wall. Um, it's a 10 year minimum. So there's a bit of what business owners do have to um, agree to um, in terms of maintenance or how long they're keeping it up there. Um, and we just don't have the capacity on complete street staff to really like shepherd that whole process like the Arts Council would. But that doesn't mean that we can't be absolutely be technical support in making sure that those conversations are happening, that we're facilitating you speaking with those kinds of folks. But we can't be the essentially the secure of wall space. Um, the other thing I'll say is that that's something where the bike lane murals are really exciting because the bike lanes are a part of this project in scope. And so thinking maybe, you know, we're not up on a 2D surface um, that's in kind of our normal vision scope, but how we use that ground space or how we use street space and sidewalk space, um, maybe thinking about shifting it that way if it becomes intimidating to secure the business owners. But I would say for the proposal portion, um, don't be limited by needing to have pre-approval or this or that, because we understand that we'll kind of roll with the punches of, of where walls are. There are walls available. There are public buildings, there are private buildings. So um, yeah, I just want to put that in there. We understand it's an artistic process. It's overwhelming. And we've done this with the mini grants, a bit of facilitating connections with the city and, and relevant partners. And to your point, I, uh, we do have good facilitation potential. And that is something we can certainly make the connections for folks to help the creative process move forward. Yes, thank you, Lilith. That was very helpful. Um, Gaia, does that, do you have any um, further thought there? I was just saying thank you. All right. 
yeah, so definitely don't don't let this that hindrance stop you. Um, as Lewis said, we can facilitate quite a lot. Um, uh, any other questions? We have a couple minutes left. Okay, well, hearing none, uh, you know, reach out. I'm Rob at Bike Easy. Catherine is C Wheeler at Seoul, right? Yep. Yeah. Soulnola.org. Soulnola.org. And um, yeah, Lilith is around as well, but uh, she'll, she, she'll chime in. Hey there. All right, we got a young artist. Did you have a question, Elizabeth? No? Okay. I think I saw a no. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, everyone. So look, please, uh, please apply. Um, if for any reason you, um, you know, can't or whatever, you know, something gets in your way, spread the word. Um, but I, we're very much hoping that you can uh, spend some time and make this happen. Uh, we're counting on you. And uh, it's gonna be a really great, fun process. And a lot of people are excited about it. I will say that. Um, Catherine, you want to add any final thing before we go here? No, I'm just really excited to see everyone's ideas um, and to see this come to fruition. I think it can be, it's got the potential to be something really cool. And um, I'm personally so excited just about the bike, ne bike network expanding, but to um, incorporate art into it in a way that really, like I said, helps build a sense of community with the bike lanes, I think is going to be really important for the city. Um, and yeah. Thank you for your help in doing that. All right, thanks again, y'all. And we will post this video and send it around for everyone. So thanks again. See you soon. Bye.